I'd like to say a few things about uh, business risk in Southeast Asia. Reading a lot of headlines at the moment about the end of globalization, globalization under threat, challenges to globalization. And this is, of course, driven by developments in what is traditionally described as the first world, the EU, United States, Brexit, the arrival of the Donald Trump administration. What you don't hear so much about is the fact that Southeast Asia and many other parts of the developing world, for that matter, are still extremely keen on globalization. It has provided huge amounts of wealth. It has accelerated the incomes of this region's middle classes far, far more uh, rapidly than those of, uh, of the first world. And that is reflected in the keenness of the governments of this region to continue presenting themselves as a, a business-friendly face. If you think specifics, uh, Thailand is still uh, very much concentrated on improving the quality of uh, the foreign investment opportunities in its, its, its major business industrial zones. If you think about even the Philippines with its rumbuctuous President Duterte behind his rhetoric, is actually a very strong effort on the behalf, behalf of that administration to really streamline business processes for foreigners. Even Indonesia, which has had a bit of a roller coaster ride with the foreign investment community in recent years, uh, even there the Jokowi administration has focused quite hard on improving the number of areas in which foreigners can actually invest in the Indonesian economy. All to the good. But I would provide that very positive view with just four caveats. Um, and the first one is that often the regulations, the laws that surround business investment and the, and the management of businesses in this part of the world can be quite gray. And when laws are unclear, opportunities arise for unscrupulous officials to exploit them. And we've seen that in a number of uh, situations where officials have extorted businesses for non-compliance with rules that are very difficult to comply with in the first place. Um, Indonesia, Thailand, Vietnam have, have all seen instances of this in recent years. I think the second uh, and related factor um, is the corruption uh, that often this regulatory greyness can, can uh, encourage. And that in turn increases the liability of foreign companies to their own domestic anti-corruption legislation such as the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act. But whilst the domestic circumstances of corruption in places like Vietnam um, and Indonesia have only marginally improved in recent years, their anti-corruption agencies and their anti-corruption laws have improved markedly. So you have that squeeze in place almost on foreign businesses um, in, in that particular regard. And then another area, again, all interconnected with this, um, is just how erratically governments can actually apply the rules to businesses. Um, if you take the example of Indonesia, you saw this year the imposition of, a, or the continuation rather, of a, of a, of a ban on mineral exports then a declaration that that ban would be lifted only to find the ban reimposed again. And actually for businesses trying to make strategy, trying to plan long term, that erratic behavior uh, can be extremely challenging. And just the final thing I would say is that this environment can often be exploited by local business groups at the more unscrupulous end of the spectrum to actually attack foreign competitors. So courts, officials can be manipulated um, to damage the interests of foreign businesses. And so I would say this, now is the time to invest in Southeast Asia, probably more than any other time, because it's one of the last bastions of the open door to foreign investment. But at the same time, if you come, come well armed against the factors that I just described to you.